that was a muck up. Hi, <laughs> welcome to another video. Uh, my name is Mitch. I'm a software engineer from New Zealand. Uh, and this is a video about Space Traders API. Uh, it's a cold Sunday afternoon, so I thought I would just uh, mess around a little bit with something new, uh, something that sort of come across, something that I've come across uh, that looks kind of interesting. Yeah, so what is Space Traders API? So it is a headless API. I had to look up what headless is. Um, I guess a quick background on me. Uh, I studied to be a game developer and then switched to web development. Even though I've been working in web development for a number of years now, um, I'm not that altogether <laughs> sort of caught up with every sort of termino terminology there is out there because software development loves its f terminology. Uh, so yeah, headless. It's basically we have APIs that don't return any graphical information. It's just basically JSON returned to you, which is why a lot of people have been making their own GUIs for this. Um, but it's a fleet management system. Uh, fleet management system. What are they calling? It? Yeah, Space Traders. A uh, Space Traders is an API-based game where you acquire and manage a fleet of ships to explore, trade, and fight your way across the galaxy. Use any programming language with our API to control the most powerful fleet in the universe. Now, I came across this because at work uh, on one day, I was walked in around lunchtime and I saw my CTO with a stream of information on his screen. Uh, and I walked over and had a chat with him and it turns out he was actually um, playing with this and this became his new obsession where he was building all sorts of tools, all sorts of workers to go out um, and process all of this information and it looked really interesting so I thought I, this Sunday afternoon I would actually jump in and just take a look for myself and yeah, and sort of make a video, practice my public speaking or just my speaking in general because as you can tell I'm not very good <laughs> um, but yeah let's let's jump into it so I've decided to do I'm gonna use Python because I want to get better at Python it's something I use on my day-to-day -day job um, but I guess the other language that I'm most comfortable with is C sharp but I want to I want to jump into Python and this and sort of learn a bit more uh, so let's jump over to the docs actually. Now I've messed around a little bit just to sort of get myself situated. And I gotta say the documentation that they've provided for this is really well done. Like really well done. I'm really quite excited about documentation for some reason. But I really appreciate it. Um, getting getting into this has been really helpful. All right, let's switch over to, do we want to jump over to the code? I'm just using, what am I using? This is obviously JetBrains software. I think it's PyCharm community, right? Yeah, PyCharm community, which is free, which is great. Um, I do have uh, JetBrains Rider uh, paying for that, but um, I don't know how much Python development I'm going to be doing, so I thought I would just check out the free version of the tools. So much appreciated for JetBrains for putting out a community free tooling. But let's start off by going through the, oops, switching back over to the docs. Let's just go through the docs and see how far we can get through, get ourselves set up um, and see what we can learn. Um, well, those docs seem pretty small, so let's just zoom in a little bit. Alright, so what, first of, before we jump into this, awkward hands on hips, um, this API is apparently still in alpha, that's correct. Uh, so it's still under development, so every week, uh, I think every week or every week, two weeks, uh, they reset everything. Uh, so you're using a sort of shared servers with everyone, you're making API requests to the same servers. So all of your data lives in the same space as everyone else, so it could be interactive and you can interact with other players. Um, I don't know how far they've gotten with actually being able to 
compete against other people but i know that there is a leaderboard in this as well so i guess over time they're going to be expanding this out expanding the functionality um the best api to support your learning yeah like this i think this is a really awesome idea that people that are just starting to learn programming languages or even experimenting with a new language should be able to jump in um try things out in a really easy and carefree way but yeah as you can see other people have built ui on top of this what i'm going to be doing is i'm just going to be doing it all from the command line maybe put in some fancy tables and stuff but we'll see how far we get yeah people have gone all out on some of these like look at this and these are pretty cool like full-on ui that they're everyone that this person is self-hosting which is pretty cool anyway let's jump into the guide and let's just start experimenting and you can all judge me on how bad my code is anyway sorry for the self-deprecation all the time and constantly apologizing all right so the quick start guide should take about five minutes and we'll walk you uh, and we'll walk a new user through some common HTTP requests when working on Space Traders API. So the first thing that we need to be doing is registering, registering ourselves as a new agent. Um, players are called agents and each agent is identified by a unique call sign such as Zero Shot or Space Trader. All of your ships, contracts, credits and other game associate assets will be associated with your agent identity cool so it's just like you create yourself a player and then everything is associated around that and you'll be given i think it's an api token yeah an access token that we can use to represent ourselves now the good thing about this is like i'm probably not going to be trying to blur out any of this sort of stuff so you can see everything they'll be resetting everything so my access token that you might see on screen isn't going to be useful at all um, not that i really care too much right now about losing any information but yeah let's jump in we're going to register a new agent and then view your starting location so let's jump to the code because i've already got a little couple of snippets here so this is python uh, i've already installed i guess a couple of packages just to help me out so i've got requests here and that's going to help me do some web requests and also i installed rich as well which will just make the printing colorful and a little bit nicer for everyone watching at home um but yeah if we just make this first request so this is just hitting the i guess home endpoint here and it's going to give us a bunch of information all in JSON. Just make that a little bit bigger. What is this giving us? That's not printing in color. Let's do that. That's better. Can be doing that from now on. All right. So this is just printing out a bunch of stats. What do we got? Two thousand agents. Six thousand ships. 12,000 systems to explore that's quite a lot and then you've got the <coughs> leaderboards here that's a lot of credits what is that like looking at a couple of hundred million four hundred half a billion credits jeez all right a bunch of information people can probably print this out on screen is like helpful information all good all right let's move on to something actually some more interesting no way all right let's actually register ourselves as a new agent and actually start mucking around with this so what are we doing here building some json data deciding on a name for myself joining the default faction and we're going to register and put that out all right and that's going to give us our api token so let's do that now did that give me my api token 
Yes, and okay, I uh, gave let's double check on the top. Uh, geez, that's a lot of information. All right, so this is my token. I need this guy because this is going to represent me every rep request that I make. And what I need is to dump this into a file. Let's call the secrets. Dump that in. fine if it is not I will come back to it <clears throat> excuse me all right so we get some starting credits which is pretty good what else have we gotten here we've been given a contract of procurement oh man that's procurement procurement we have not accepted it so I guess the what was it the basic gameplay right now is giving and receiving contracts and going out and mining things exploring systems collecting resources and coming up coming back buying ships upgrading ships um, I think eventually there's going to be more sort of multiplayer based stuff but right now the, I think the basic sort of concepts are based around that <coughs> all right well, it looks like we've been given a ship we've got a crew we've got a crew of 59 people Jeez, so much responsibility so soon. Bunch of modules, so this is all of the, I guess, yeah, the ships have modules that you can sort of upgrade, which is quite cool. A basic sensor array that improves the ship's ability to detect and track other objects in space. Cool, all right, let's comment that out because I don't want to be rerunning that multiple times. And now we have some code we've prepared earlier. So we've got secrets here. It's gonna open that secrets file I just created. It's going to read it out. And then we're gonna create a local object that's called headers. And that's gonna be just a dictionary. And that's gonna hold my access token so that I can do this. We can then just hit this endpoint, which is just going to give me information on my agent. So what I've been reading before is every endpoint that's um, prefixed or postfixed with my, uh, I guess prefixed, uh, is just going to give me give you information on your your stuff. So your agent and your ship. So let's run that and see. Oh, that's not do it there. Let's see if this breaks. Invalid token. Thought so. I think the reason for that is because this isn't on the same line. Because it's just reading one line. Let's just do that. Clear the screen. Run that again. Here we go. So just going to give me, oh, sorry, I am pushing way too much information into this console, making it hard on everyone. Cool, that's cool. That's a simple output. So this is just information on my agent or my player, I guess. So we've got some coordinates here to where my headquarters are. Got credits, cosmic. Let's jump back to the documentation. So what have we done? We've registered ourselves as a new agent. Yep, so I've done that web request. I've checked out my agent information. 
Now I can start viewing my starting location. Okay, so this, they've got a coordinate system that's based on, I guess, a set of characters that are joined together um, and depending on how those characters are brought together will define a specific location. So, for example, this here is a exact coordinate which is broken down into parts of x1 which is the sector x1 df55 is the system so this sector with this specific system and then the full coordinate gives you the waypoint to view your starting waypoint location send the following request all right so that's whoop. Let's not copy all of that. Let's just grab this bad boy. Come here. Let's jump back across. Let's just chuck that there. Copy and paste. Alright, so now we go to fill in these extra information. Alright, so we were given headquarters information. What did the documentation say? To view your starting waypoint location, send the following request. So, system, this is the system, waypoint symbol. And they're saying each waypoint has a type. And the, it's saying, I think this is saying, each waypoint has a set of X and Y coordinates that describe its location relative to the system it is in. So the coordinates that you get back are local coordinates, not global coordinates for the entire universe. Which is all good. Right, let's take... Let's put that there. Now I am going to guess that I'm doing this correctly. Let's see if I get this wrong. Resource with the given identifier does not exist. Let's try putting the entire specific coordinate in there. That seems to have done it. Cool, let's reprint that out so we can all read that. So this is giving me information on the current waypoint. So what is this saying? We are, this waypoint is a planet. And that planet in the system is this coordinates, orbitals. So I could probably plug this information into there to get information on that particular orbital. So I guess maybe these are like moons. All right, so traits, overcrowded, high tech. So this is describing the planet that we're on. Oh, charted by cosmic. Oh, that's cool. So we could probably discover them and then have our faction named as the people that discovered them. That's kind of cool. All 
Alright, so we know where we are. We're on a planet. The planet doesn't seem to have a name. But it does have a coordinate. Alright, let's go back to the docks and see what else we can do. Let's do our first mission. Now, I remember looking at my information when I first created that I had a contract. So let's see. Let's start doing some stuff. No. Chuck that in. I'll copy paste. All right, so we've got an example of that. And take this endpoint. Slap that in there. Clear the screen. All right, contract information. I currently have one. Cool, that's not that helpful. Data. There's no data in there. That didn't look like it printed properly. It didn't print properly. Alright, so obviously we can do some pagination if we were building a front-end UI for, for this. And we only have one contract which is to procure some aluminum, aluminium, no, aluminum, aluminum, we're just going with that pronunciation, or, all right, I think I have to accept this before we can do anything with it, so let's see, first mission, faction contracts are a good way to earn credits and learn the basics of the game. Your starter contract will require you to mine an asteroid field and deliver the ores to a nearby, way, nearby waypoint. When you registered your agent, you were given a starter contract. Yes, we were. If you don't have a contract ID, you can view your contracts again by sending the following request. Yep, we just did that. Contract terms. Let me just check something. Alright, so each contract will have a set of terms which describe the requirements for completing the contract. For example, you may be required to deliver a specified amount of cargo to a destination waypoint. Contracts have a deadline. Um, let's have a look at that deadline. Where was that deadline information? We've got payment. Deadline. And so this is saying on the 9th of July at 2.30. So that gives us an entire week. Yeah, because it was the second today. All right, so no pressure. Oh, but there is an expiration, which is in a day. So we do have a deadline to accept, which is 24 hours. All right, let us accept it. We just need to post to this. And 
accept. The route does not exist. What did I do? Hmm. I did a get. That's why. Is that what you're complaining about? Because this endpoint is actually a post. It is a post. All right. And okay, it's a post. Fair enough. Makes sense, but I'm not really giving it any data. There we go. Scroll up. Cool, so that's flicked over to true. So if we were to now comment that back out and just look at my contracts, we should probably see the same information. True. Deadline to accept. So we still get that information back, which is fine, doesn't matter. So, oh cool, so on accepted, we should have been given a bunch of credits actually. So let's clear the screen and now let's look at my agent. Run that. And I have a bunch more credits. Nice. Now I think those credits will actually be taken away from me if I fail to actually fulfill the contract. So I don't really want to get to a situation where I spend those credits and then don't fulfill the contract because I may get a bounty on my head. Who knows? All right, so we've accepted our contract. All right, we need to complete your con to complete the contract, you will need to purchase a ship, navigate the ship to an asteroid field, extract the ores until your cargo is full, and deposit them at the delivery waypoint. I think I already have a ship though. Excuse me. is to find a shipyard, view all available ships. So shipyard, purchase a ship, run asteroids. Let's take a look at, yeah, let's take a look at the my ships endpoint. So I may have a ship, but it may only be a transportation ship. That might be why they're asking us to purchase another one. No, what are you doing? All right. Not a copy and paste. I think eventually once I get I guess the basics down, we'll start creating some more I guess complex functionality and my plan is to maybe continue on with this and build like workers and so we can have things running in the background and we can just make some I don't know basic decisions on what we want to do. But for now it's just gonna be basic posting to things and seeing how the data is laid out. Request could not be processed due to an invalid payload. Ship type field is required. All right, let's figure out how to do this. I want to see if I actually have one of these mining drones ready. I don't think I do. Right. 
let's just dump that there. And let's just go, this is whoa, chip data. Ship date, no. Ship data. I do not want to be messing with date times right now. Alright, what do we got? Can we do it after the headers? I think we can. It doesn't matter about positional arguments. Data. Ship data. Alright, let's see if this guy is happy now. How to purchase ship. I don't want to purchase it though, I just want to view my ships. Oh wait, it's got a symbol here. Can we just comment that out? Due to an invalid payload, the waypoint symbol is required. All right. Shipyard waypoint symbol. All right, let's back out and follow the documentation. I think I've skipped too far ahead. I've gone ahead of myself. All right, we've accepted the contract. Let's purchase the ship. Let's follow it all the way through. Keep that there. Move that down. Right, let's check what shipyards we have. Uh, we're going to list the waypoints first, so this was our system symbol. Let's go. Cool. Sorry, is it a get? It is a get. All right. That's quite a bit of information. lot of information. Alright, let us do this. Let's debug it and we can step through the data. That's going to look really small though for you. Can I make this bigger? Sorry folks. All right, let's just take a quick look through here. I'm not going to be able to make that bigger. Um, so it has a type. Type planet. Got another planet. Got a moon. Another moon. Another moon. Asteroid field. Gas giant. Orbital station. Paint. It's a planet. And jump cake. Terminal. 
Okay, so we need to look for a waypoint with the shipyard trait. And we just did that endpoint, which gave us all waypoints. Take note of the symbol for the orbital station. So the orbital station waypoint has a shipyard. So I did see that in there. And I can purchase a mining drone there. To view the ships available for purchase at a shipyard, send the following request. You will notice that there is a mining drone available for purchase, which can help you fulfill your starting contract. Let's do it. System symbol, X1, chuck that in there, shipyard waypoint system symbol. Alright, so let's rerun this and grab that. So I actually need a bit of information. So jump gate. Here we go, orbital station. It has a military base, a marketplace, and a shipyard. So this is the exact coordinate. lot of information it's just going oh man it's just all right let's go back to the docks this is overwhelming so what have we done we listed the waypoints we then listed the information of the shipyard a request so you can purchase a ship at a shipyard sending a post request to the my ships endpoint that feels a little bit weird oh well sending this request will deduct the cost of the ship from your credits and add the ship to your fleet you'll need to specify the type of ship you want to purchase along with the waypoint you are purchasing from Which I think was this guy. So this shipyard has a mining drone. Previous transactions. Ships, ship probe, mining drone, purchase price. So <clears throat> that seems to be the one that we're going to be purchasing. Small, unmanned spacecraft that can be used for mining operations, such as extracting valuable minerals from asteroids. 
Yes, sir. Let's do it. Clear screen. Oh, I gotta put in the waypoint symbol. Right. This is the shipyard. Transaction. Got ourselves a ship. Oh, a drone. Agent Tusik Smitch. That's me. us what to do. Let's mine our first asteroid. Your mining drone is equipped with a mining laser, which can be used to extract valuable ores and minerals. Alright, so we're going to get our drone to the asteroid field. Alright, fly to an asteroid field. Now things are getting interesting. Comment that guy out. My ships. So we got a waypoint symbol. I'm guessing the mining ship symbol is the name, what it's registered as. Yeah. Documentation will probably tell us. Just take a guess. Let's guess. So we're telling it that telling it to get into orbit because it's docked currently. Let's make sure your ship is in orbit and then navigate to our target. All right. Make it so. What did I do? I copy and pasted something that I shouldn't have done. We are in orbit. Well, my drone is. Ah, uh, okay, so we've got a bunch of, I guess, dates and timing information now. So things are starting to get not instantaneous. Departure time. Seems like that was instantaneous. Let's go back to the docks. Alright, so we're in orbit, and now we're going to hit another endpoint to navigate. Now that your ship is in orbit, your ship is in nav your ship navigation status should now be in transit. Alright, so let's let's copy paste this bad boy. In 
ね。First, where we want to send this little guy. Let's just call this nav data. And we want to tell it to navigate, not to orbit. And we're telling the mining ship to do it. Drone, mining drone. Where do we want to go? The asteroid field waypoint symbol. Where do I get that from? Is that in the contract? Yeah, let's go back to our contract. So we've got waypoints. Let's take a look at my contracts again. That's being weird. Destination symbol, there we go. That's where we're delivering it to. It's just in our local neighborhood. Or maybe it doesn't. Destination matters, but it doesn't matter where you get these valuable ores from as long as you deliver them to this place. That would make sense. Not that it would tell us where it wants you to go get them. Because that would be boring. Which makes me think that we need to list out our waypoints again and figure out where this asteroid field is. All right, so this is going to spit out a bunch of information, but I think part of it was gas giant we do not want asteroid field that sounds like a winner so what do we got we got mineral deposits um, silicon crystals and quartz we want aluminum there we go common metal deposits Right, we want to go to the asteroid field. That is in our same system, so we're staying local. Go to that guy. Navigate to that waypoint. In the drone there. So our response is we got a route. We're going to depart from the orbital station. Destination is the asteroid field. Bunch of coordinates. We are departing now. And we're going to arrive in at 3.11 in a couple minutes. Let's 
I suppose here we would actually, I guess, build like a worker in the background to constantly check and update if once this is finally moved from in transit to arrived. Let's go to the docks. He is an in transit. While your ship is in transit, most of the requests for that ship will return an error code. Try sending the navigation request again. Why not? Rerun this. Ship is currently in transit. We'll arrive in 65 seconds. So I suppose we could build an API to constantly hit that read out the timer probably don't want to do that probably just want to hit it once navigate it grab the arrival time and then build a timer based on that whoops let's go back to the docks and see all right so once we're out of transit your ship arrives we will want to refill, refuel the ship before extracting any ores. All right, let's actually check now if it has arrived. Four seconds, we're very close. I don't want to keep hitting that navigate endpoint though. Can I just hit the my ship's endpoint? What have we got? Contracts, my ships. Can I do that? I'm wondering here. I'm going rogue. I just want to get information on all of them if I get request that it does give us everything all right two six Mitch three which is our drone departed destination it's in orbit Yeah, but is it an orbit in the asteroid field? Hmm. Let's double check one more time. Maybe we just refer back to the dog. We are in the orbit, in the navigate. Let's just try hitting the navigate input again. Because we can't navigate to somewhere already there currently located at the destination excellent all right so let's dock and then maybe we wrap up for today when your ship arrives at the target waypoint we will want to refuel the ship you can dock your ship at a waypoint by sending the following request all right we're just posting Easy, let's bring it in. So let's comment you out. Don't need the navigational data. Here 
and which ship is it? Hopefully in the future we'll be able to rename these. Rename these sh ships. All right, let's dock. There we go. Cool. System. Currently there. We left at 3.09, arrived at 3.11. Very nice. All right, I think we'll wrap it up and stop there. Let's do a real quick recap on what we did. So we just basically went through the first parts of the quick start guide. We started a new game, got ourselves our agent, and then checked out our starting location, understood the coordinates, started to view our contracts, we accepted one, when purchase our, purchased ourselves a drone for being able to mine, then we could view them, and then we started to fly to the asteroid field. We docked at the asteroid field. Field, yep. So next time we can refuel our ship and then we can start extracting ores. Very nice. That's quite cool. Nothing too complicated, uh, I guess, for this first video. Just sort of diving in and figuring out how to get things running, what are the basics, what are the information we're going to get back. It seem, seems like we've just, I guess, scratched the surface a little bit. Um, but certainly a, mo a lot more that we can go into and dive into next time. But yeah, that's Space Traders API. Pretty cool. Um, quite looking forward to diving into this again, but we'll do that in a, another video. So yeah, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. See ya.